What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Beyond the 90. And we have a very special video for you. We've done it for Samore. We've done it for Dakar. We've done it for Ryan Bertrand. And now the brand new signing, Yannick Vestergaard, officially signed by the club. We're going to look into him a little bit. We've done the analysis. And trust me, this one is going to be good as well. So if you appreciate it, and if we appreciate you leaving a like, subscribe, all that good stuff on the video. But apart from that, Let's get straight into it. So what do we know so far? So we know for the fee is about £15 million. We've scouted him for a while. We looked at him in 2020. All the research has been done about him. We know he was going to be a good player. So when Fafana got injured, we, we paid the money and we just got him in the squad. It's literally three days and it's completely done. £15 million it cost. Um, and he was one year left on his contract. So Southampton, it was kind of a win-win for everybody. Southampton needed to play needed some money in because they knew he they were going to leave him on a free if he was to go for next year. Leicester needed to play in this position and he adds experience. And the thing is with likes of Christian Fuchs leaving, we, we've got Ryan Bertrand replacement again from Southampton. With the likes of Wes Morgan leaving, now we've got Vestergaard as kind of a like for like comparison. I will do some comparisons later, so make sure you stay tuned for that one. Again, some of these statistics you've probably seen 199 centimeters, six foot six 29 years old brings bags of experience to play plenty of game for Southampton and playing on the def defensive side he's got plenty of experience and he's just the kind of player we need especially with Johnny Evans being out we don't know when he returns especially with Fafana being out for pretty much the majority of the season from what it looks like as well he'll be a perfect player for us and anyway the next thing we're going to look into is his qualities and what he's good for so the qualities we're going to look at are his long ball situations. I mean, there's been going around Twitter at the moment, his ability to play the long ball out from the back. It's kind of like Johnny Evans is, kind of like Samori is, but obviously Samori is a midfielder. His ability to play that ball out from the back is fantastic. It'll help split defensives. One thing as well that Brendan Rodgers likes to do, he likes a player that can play the ball from the back. Vestergaard can do that fantastically. Like Suyuncu, he's very, very good with his feet. We'll look into the kind of the comparison between the two players and um, the formation they could work in a little bit later. But one of the things that Suyuncu is fantastic at is the ball at his feet, driving forward, putting in crunching tackles. He's not the quickest. We all know this, I think, from the time that he was sent off against Jamie Vardy when we drew 1-1. However, if we're looking at the way how he plays, He's very solid. He can lead. And that's what's important. We complained about the experience leaving the squad. We've now got that in in Bertrand and now Vestergaard. Both from Southampton. And we'll get into, get into that a little bit later. But in terms of the ball at his feet, he's fantastic. In terms of a tackle, he's sensational. The only thing I would say is potentially when he's caught on the half turn. But with somebody like Suyuncu or somebody like Daniel Amate uh, that we've got fit alongside, I think that's not really a problem because you've got the pace of Suyuncu to more than make up for that. Another thing as well is Bertrand. He knows him inside out because he's been playing with him for the past three years. So that relationship there is is fantastic. And, and we saw how Bertrand has done in pre-season. He's been absolutely sensational for Leicester City. And you can expect him pretty much to start a lot of the Premier League games as well. Another player as well, Kasper Schmeichel, knows him inside out because of the time he spent at Denmark. I mean, he's Kasper Schmeichel's 35, uh, Vestergaard's 29. They've known each other from the international group and they know exactly what it's about. Kasper Schmeichel starts for Denmark. Yeah, and Vestergaard's they've got 30, 29 caps in total, so pretty good amount of caps. But at the same time, it just helps with that squad synergy. If he's going to be put in a position like he is now, He's going to be put into the team. He's going to be filtered into the team at times, playing two, three at the back or uh, four at the back, depending on which formation we play. And he'll fit in perfectly. And we'll look a bit into formations later, but I just want to take it on to comparing him to Johnny Evans. We know that Johnny Evans isn't available at the moment. We know that when Vestergaard, when all the players are fit, probably Vestergaard is fourth choice. But what you need to compete on multiple fronts as a player like Vestergaard. So I'm super happy, happy we got him. But let's go and compare him to Johnny Evans. Now, you guys know me. You know that I hate complaining players side to side. However, this is a perfect way to kind of show what kind of player he is. We know that Fofana and Suyuncu are very two sim very similar players. Very attack, very good on the front foot, very good with the ball at their feet, very quick, very agile, very young. Vest these Vestergaard and Evans kind of match each other quite well. And as you can see from the graphs in terms of here, physicality, Yannick Vestergaard brings in heaps. And it's something that we're going to need, especially from defending set pieces and attacking set pieces. This has been one of Leicester's weak points over the years. You've got Suyuncu, you've got for you've got Evans as well. Both are good in the air, but you've got to be honest, they've missed a lot of chances. 
Vestergaard has got seven goals, and I'm pretty sure all of them have been from his head. So attacking the goal, this is where a, a place that we can really improve. Again, you're looking at this, 8,000 minutes. Uh, sorry, 8,900 minutes, and Evans has got 10,000. Um, 118 appearances to 104. This guy has had plenty of time and plenty of experience as well. And look, more goals than Johnny Evans. We're not saying Johnny Evans is a massive goal scorer, but he chips in at vital times to let to get the goals in. One thing I really love about um, Vestergaard as well is not just attacking, but defending set pieces. We know that we have a problem with defending set pieces and we have to rely on the brilliance of Casper Michael to get us out of sticky situations. But in this case, Vestergaard, just with his height and his physical presence in the box, is going to give a lot more solidity. Some players, especially like Samore as well, who we'll come on to in a second, how he can work in the formations, will allow that as well. But especially Vestergaard, who's playing as that position, I think it would be fantastic. One thing as well, he's left-footed while um, 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 Johnny Evans is right. I've seen as well that like, y- Yannick Vestergaard is left-footed just like Suyuncu. However, he is able to play on the right and he's comfortable with the b- ball at both on both feet, which is going to make a big difference. They're not the play. They can both, he can play on the right-hand side as well, which I think is fantastic. So one thing to look at as well is the FB ref statistics. I love looking at these and what kind of, what kind of statistics. Again, bearing in mind, Ryan Burton's, a lot of this was more red. However, some of these statistics was fantastic. Apparently when we were going to buy him in 2020 from Southampton, they would have, delivered him over to us but since then he's taken on another uh, career of his he's taken on different levels and it's been fantastic i mean you're looking at we want to look at specifically here so anything green is positive but also um one thing as well is the percentage as well what percentage is he of defenders of a similar size bearing in mind this is the last year or so when the thing is Southampton have fallen off a cliff. Remember they went to first in the Premier League and they came straight back down afterwards. So you look at some of these exactly passes attempted 66, not the best pass completion 30, not, not the best. However, there are some really good bits shots, looking at shots, total non penalty goals, um, Assists maybe not good, but we're not expecting big assists from him. If we've got the likes of Yuri Tillemans, if you could do a long pass to him or a long pass to Harvey Barnes, who can chip it in the box to a striker, that would work out fantastic as well. But these ones as well, pressures, this is not his role. So that's fine. We'll use Suyuncu especially for this as well. Tackles is where we need him to shut down the issue early. And he can do that, especially with his height, which I know I keep mentioning. Getting the ball in, cutting the put off as his source, fantastic. Clearances, one, clearances. Fantastic, 68%. And aerials won, 91%. This is the issue. This is where we can solve it, especially from them set pieces, where we need somebody that can do that. And especially with when we go and attack with his head, we saw what Bertrand can do. And no, Bertrand knows how Vestergaard plays. From attacking set pieces, that could be vital next season. If we need a goal here or there to win a game or with a 2-1-1 one, one down to get that 2-1, Every little helps in this situation. This is why I think he would be fantastic. Uh, touches, again, 98% in the um, attacking penalty area, which is fantastic. Dribbles competed at 82% as well. Progressive carries, 73%. So it shows he's not just one kind of player. He can do multiple things at the same time. And that's fantastic if we want to progress to the next level. Having players like this in the squad creates competition. And I think this can only be a good thing for Leicester City. So the next thing I want to look at is formations. How would he fit into the Leicester team? What formations could he play? He's played a 4-2-2 before previously under Ralph Hassan Hootel. So we'll go to a 4-2-3-1. A similar formation to what we saw against Manchester City, where we won the Community Shield. Still feels fantastic. Let's go straight into it. Okay, so this is the formation that I've picked. Pretty much the same formation that we played against Man City. But instead of Amate, we play Vestergaard in that position. So probably on that right-hand side, again, he knows Bertrand. He knows Schmeichel. Sionchu, again, will be a bit adapting, but it gives us that yin and yang. A lot of the time with um, Harry Redknapp and the way he had like a big striker and a small striker, that's kind of what we have here in terms of centre-backs. A big, strong, holding, leading centre-back and then a young, spriteful pressing, adapt, um, working forward, really workhorse with pace in Suyuncu as well. These two are going to be vital, in my opinion. Bertrand and Pereira, we saw how good both of them were, kind of going one at a time and, and 
getting back to the levels, especially with Ricardo. It's so good to have. One thing I think that could really, really be useful as well, Vestergaard could put in a long pass. So going over to somebody like a Harvey Barnes on that left-hand side who just wants to run at players and turn, I think this is where that could be vital. Using Vestergaard to switch the ball over to Barnes and change the play very quickly. Brendan Rodgers wants to play multiple ways. So if we want to play out from the back, which we know Brendan Rodgers does, he can do that. Play it over to Barnes, play it over to Madison, or play it over to Perez and then into Vardy. I don't think we'll go from Vestergaard to Vardy, to be honest, very often. Also, we could spread the play to either wings. We know that Bertrand could make darty runs forward. We've seen that already. And Pereira, back to his own, we know how good he is, overlapping with Perez on this side, but also running into the channels, the, uh, all driving into the centre. Vestergaard can do that. With the ball at his feet, he's comfortable. And that's something very, very important. Alongside Sionju, he could pass it over, playing um, Kasper Schmeichel, who he knows as a sweeper keeper as well. Super useful. So I think this is one formation we could see Vestergaard play in the future. Another formation we could see is three at the back, just like you can see here. Kind of a similar formation to what we were playing last time. Again, so we've got Vestergaard, I would say probably sits in the middle, Daniel Lamarty to the right, and Sionchu to the left. This is kind of a similar formation that we had with Johnny Evans when we played the 3-5-2 with Justin on this side against Man City, we would beat them 5-2. So Vestergaard sits in the middle of this. It means that he can work either with Amarty. Again, he's, he knows what he's doing in that situation. He can play the ball away fantastically and then potentially yeah, swapping in Didi and Tillemans for this one playing it then forward Madison then picking up the pockets but again giving Vestergaard the option of being that main centre back spraying the ball because Sionchi can do that as well spraying the ball from either one of these two over to Bertrand over to um, James Madison over to Pereira giving him that width and allowing us to transition from attack Sorry, defense to attack really quickly. And Diddy does what does what he does best. But the problem is probably playing these three at the current moment with Fafana out and Evans out. I probably wouldn't play this formation because if you do get an injury to one of these players, then you're going to have to play a player that's got no center back experience or putting people in positions where they're not as well comfortable. So again, in this formation, probably playing Vestergaard over to Bring the ball over to Tillemans, again, creating space, opening up for Vardy and Nacho could work as well. But I know we three at the back is something that we know quite well. And again, it gets the best out of Bertrand and Pereira as well, with them kind of flying fullbacks defensively and attacking as well. Vardy and Nacho, we don't even need to say. They've been fantastic this season. It's a way of getting them both in the team. But I want to give another example. Say we get an injury to somebody. Say we get an injury to Daniel Amati. What do we do then if we still want to continue with three at the back or we need to play a formation that needs a three at the back formation? What do we do? So I think this is what we do. We drop Bertrand into a back three. I think he said before, I think publicly in the press, that he is able to play as a centre-back um, if, if needs be. So this is when people are fit. This is not something that's going to be played available um, because I don't think Castagna and Justin will really play um, in the beginning of the season, obviously Justin's just coming back from a horrible, horrible injury, and Castagna is just coming back because obviously he had he's got a face mask at the moment. However, I just wanted to change it up very slightly in terms of some of the players we've got. So we've took Sionchu out, we've dropped Bertrand into the back three, which I think he could do fantastically. Defensively, he's he's very strong. I was going to put Luke Thomas in, but he's not on this um, foothead.com, so we wouldn't be able to do that. Anyway, we've got Madison Tillemans and Samore again playing the kind of that in Diddy role, kind of coming forwards and backwards, I think could go fantastic driving into the midfield. Castagna with the overlap. But again, with Vestergaard, it allows him to show all of his kind of passing range. Samori so dropping deep can run with the ball. But if we need to, Vestergaard a long ball over the top to a Madison to then transition to maybe not a Jamie Vardy, but a Dakar in Iheanacho. Maybe then you could switch it out and then put, instead of Madison here, Harvey Barnes on that rope the left-hand side, taking up more of this position, I think would work fantastically. But back to Bertrand, kind of Bertrand, Vestergaard, again, he's played with Schmeichel, and I've said it before, Daniel Amati as well. So these guys know, these guys especially know each other. They know how each other plays. They know how each other works. And I think this could work fantastically. Going forward, I think one of the main things we were saying as well, his ability to play out from the back would work fantastically for Leicester City. So what do we think in conclusion? I think great signing. To be fair, he's going to be fourth choice centre back. We've said that with Amar with <laughs> with Amarty's going to be fifth choice. Then Fofana, Suyunchu, 
and Evans will be the main back three if we play there. He's playing the back two. He knows how they work. He's played alongside Ishida and I think um, Romeo. I can't remember the name of the, the centre-back from Southampton. However, again, they're getting the best out and it works best for everybody. They get the player, they get 50 million player pounds. We get a player that we know we that was Premier League proven, which is fantastic. I mean, the amount of times we've jumped into other places, I think, I mean, is great. But it's having that defensive solidity. Premier League is probably the best place to go as well. We saw how long it took for Asuyan to, to change, but somebody like um, Fafana, it can't. We got we got quite lucky with him. We know what we were getting, but he had to jump in straight away, and he just took like, took it took to it like a duck to water. Another thing as well. It's just a solid signing. It really is. It's been such a good transfer window with the four transfers I was mentioning at the beginning of the, at the beginning of the video. He knows Bertrand and Cassius Michael. That's going to help immediately, considering we need replacements relatively soon, and the games are going to come in thick and fast from now on. And I think you just need to look at him in terms of how big he is and our physical presence. We have lacked that from the team. We've lacked that physical presence in the box in our box and in the opposition's box, with somebody like Bertrand, who knows how to take a corner, I'm not saying we love Tillemans, we love Madison, but their corners last season weren't up to scratch. They weren't good enough. Somebody like Mark or Brighton, somebody like uh, Ryan Bertrand, I think is going to do fantastically with somebody like a Vestergaard. And hopefully we can score more set pieces. His presence as well defending set piece is going to be fantastic overall i'm super happy with this signing let me know what you think of this kind of format and things in down below i um, really appreciate you guys checking out the channel and checking out this kind of video again this has been thrown to get together quite quickly i've not had as much time to do as research because this has just come out of nowhere as you guys have seen literally it has been signing him uh, to brendan rogers announced he's training with the first team to the next day where it's announced and but for, do you know what? i love it We've got a good signing in. I'm really happy about it. If you've enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. You'll see more of this kind of content if we do make another signing. I don't know if that's going to happen. It's going to be another right winger. We will have to see. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see everybody in the next video. So goodbye.